Shalom, giving all praises and glory in worship to Yahweh, Bashim Yahashai, Bahashim Chakodash, the abundance of the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone. Citation to you, Akim, upon the testimony of our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai, in truth and sincerity. Now, I want to do a lesson, a Hebraic lesson, and I'm going to be utilizing the Yabarak, as we call it, uh, which is, is a it's a Hebrew prayer um, based upon the book of Numbers, the 24th chapter, 25th and 26th. And I'm going to utilize it uh, as a foundation of a foundation to die. And I'm going to dissect it from a perspective of addressing um, what indeed is the possessive adjectives and how the possessive adjectives uh, are kind of influenced um, in the midst of these of these scriptures. So to just to break it down, just a tad bit more, so we can ha have a more proper understanding of the wording in which we're utilizing, and it'll make more sense as I go on in this lesson. Uh, and um, and you'll as you can see here. You have different languages in which these scriptures are written in, from the Latin Vulgate, King James. Um, they have the, what else do they have? Noah Webster, and the Hebrew, the Paleo Hebrew. So when you have individuals, there are, they are, believe it or not, there are individuals who teach that we don't have the Hebrew. Uh, they call it um they say that we speak Hebrew Ebonics. They um and see and only the one the only ones in which they're able to deceive are the unlearned. They'll say, um, well we don't have the name. You know, you can call them whatever you want to call them. I've, it's even some of them you know, I, I know a specific group, uh, one of their top leaders even has went so, and these are these are people who say they're Hebrew Israelites, so they say they're Israelites. <laughs> See, one of the individuals said, um, you can call them whatever you want. If you can call them your play yogurt if you want. I believe that was Deacon Iathan of the IUIC. And um yeah, you shouldn't follow people like that. You should not call the Heavenly Father your you can't you actually can't call them whatever you want. You actually have to put some respect on his name and call him by his name. And um, we do, you know, they say we don't have you no. Know, you you speak for yourself. We the the learned of us, the learned amongst us, do have his name, and his name is Yahweh, and his beloved son name is Yahweh Shai. And so when you when these individuals tell you. That we, you don't have to go into the Hebrew, you don't have to go into the Greek, you don't have to go into the Latin. Yeah, yeah, yes, you do. That's how you get a more perfect understanding of the scriptures, and especially concerning the name of the Heavenly Father. But that's not necessarily what this lesson is about, but it is a point that I felt that it was appropriate for me to mention. Um, seeing that uh, we here are defenders of the gospel. Um, but from the uh, the edification of the uh, the Hebrew, the uh, well, let's firstly let's read it through from an uh, English perspective, King James to be specific. Let's read it through, and we'll dissect it from the Hebrew. Um, but more so, we're going to look at the possessive adjectives and or the conjugated essence of the possessive adjectives within the words. So the possessive adjective itself is not necessarily in the midst of these scriptures, um, which is uh, will be hawa, as you, you'll see, um, which, but let's just read this through from the, from the King James perspective and we'll get to that. So, it says, the Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. 
the Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. <clears throat> All right, from verse 20, 24, which we'll read in the Hebrew, Yabaraka Yahweh Wa Yashamarka. And that's the, from the Paleo. The Syrian, you have the modern Syrian on the bottom, you have the, the Paleo. Uh, where it says, well, you can see it, it says paleo. Um, now, ya barak. Now, what does barak mean? Barak means bless. The ka at the end, ya barak ka means bless thee. Now, it has a ya in, in, in the front of the barak. So what is that a signifier of? It's it's almost like if you're familiar with Spanish, because of, you know, of course, the a large group of of the descendants of the children of Israel actually speak Spanish, the Hispanics, as they call them today. Um, um, like for instance, um, from a, a Spanish pers uh, a Spanish perspective, right? So that you get it, because we we really don't do that in um, English. Um, I believe "bless" in Spanish is um, "bendecir," right? For that's just like saying "to bless," right? Now, if you were if you were to say for instance, um, I bless, right? You would say bendigo, right? But it, you wouldn't. You wouldn't have to. Would, technically speaking, you would, you you're supposed to say um, yo bendigo, or to make it more simplistic, because we're dealing with. I don't even know. This might have a Spanish translation on here, but to. To make it more um, specific, since we're saying um, Yahweh yeah, bless, or he, essentially saying he bless, right? So whenever, let me see here, which in the Spanish, it would be El Bendiga, correct? For, and that's, that's, um, uh, now, keep in mind, this, this is future tense. This is, um, this, is, this is future tense. So, a more perfect translation, because that would be more so present tense. A more perfect translation would be, uh, el, bendece, el bendecera. El bendecera, which means he will bless. But you don't have to say, if you're speaking to somebody in Spanish and you're saying he will bless, you don't have to say el bendecera. You can just say bendecera. Because the bendecera is conjugated to that format of bendecera, the, the, the el is not necessarily needed to be said. It's it's said in the in the conjugation of the of the word bendecer, which is bendecera. All right. Now in English we don't do that. You don't say it's nothing to cut. You have to have that possessive adjective there to signify what that word is expressing. You know whether it be future tense, present tense. Um, he, she, it, that, that possessive adjective has to be there. Now, not so in other languages, um, like the Hebrew. And I'm, I don't, I don't mean to be long winded, but I, I just wanted to make it make sense. Um, I wanted to make it make sense, especially coming from individuals who or English speakers, it might be more so difficult for us to wrap our mind around 
um, the 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 format of possessive adjectives because uh, of this magnitude because we don't deal with that in English. That's why I made that comparison and example with the, the Spanish of bendecida, which she will bless. So now the he is who? The he is Yahweh. The he is Yahweh. Which Yahweh actually means he is or he exists. That's what it directly translates to, um, which that is the proper, authentic, organic name of the Heavenly Father. Um, you no, know, it's not Most High. It's, uh, it's actually Yahweh. And so when you, when, you have, when you hear these guys say Most High Blessed, right? That's what they say. Well, um, no, it's, it's actually um, Yahweh Barak. You know, if you if you wanted to be more organic with your um speech. Um, so but the point being from a you know like I I really wanted to make this lesson regarding the possessive adjectives. So, you'll see, and this is future tense. Right, this is future tense because when you go into the possessive adjective ordeal. When you have the ya interjected in front of the verb, one that's showing you that is future tense, two is showing you that is masculine, is masculine future tense, and it's also of a of a singular persuasion. You know, is um like saying he, you know. That Yah essentially is like saying he, but Yahweh is instead of saying he, you're saying Yahweh. Is it's becoming more personalized. You know, instead of simply saying he, you're saying the actual person name. Like um uh how could you say um the Lord, which the Lord in this context would be the he. So you don't you don't actually don't you don't have the Hebrew word Hawa, you have the term Yahweh. All right. So Yabaraka Yahweh, which is Yahweh bless thee. Um Wa Ya Shamarka. So you have that Ya again. Now this Ya is not originally established in this in this word. It's a future tense. It's uh, it's um, it's essentially an indicator of a possessive adjective of a future tense essence, which the root word is shamar, and I don't believe I can highlight this whole word. No, it won't let me do that. Um, but the and those of us who who are familiar with the Hebrew, you can be you can follow me when I when I'm speaking this. The root word. Which I can actually highlight it, I believe, in the Assyrian. Not all right. So I'm gonna I'm gonna use the Assyrian. Let me see if they let me do it. Hold up. Yeah, this, I don't think it's kind of difficult to do it. All right, there we go. So the root word is shamar, but the letter now Hebrew is written from right to left. Now the letter that that small ya that that small tittle, that's why scripture say not one jot nor tittle. That's a that that well actually that's a jot, which jot represents yad, which that ya, they in the Syrian, that is the that's like essentially saying the he, but the he is Yahweh. You're not you don't have Hawah. Is this is that's a that's showing you that it's future tense more so than anything that's showing you that it's future tense and it's showing you that it's saying it's is future tense masculine. All right, so ya shamarka and with shamar means to watch or prote or protect or preserve. All right, Yahweh essentially Yahweh pr protect thee. Or, or keep thee, you know, keep meaning preserve, protect, watch. 
<clears throat> All right, verse 25. So since we got that, that we get the, the we have a foundational essence of understanding of what we're dealing with. Now we can go a little bit quicker, but we're going to have to take it a, a, a step slow because it's a little different when we go to 25 and, I, and I'll show you why. So where the, fir where the first word where it says, are Yahweh. Now, it's different here. Why? Because now the, what is the root word? The root, the root word is actually, is, this is actually not the complete root word. The entirety of the root word is actually awar, which awar means um, light. All right. It, it means light or it means um, shine in, more, in this context, more so shine. Uh, but because it's in this future tense essence, and because it's in this future tense conjugation of with the Yah, the the Y actually um, is is dissipated. That the Y actually is taken out. So you wouldn't say Yah a war, but you'll say you are. You are. So you are. You are Yahweh. All right. Yeah, which is Yahweh, Yahweh shall, Yahweh shall shine, or Yahweh, sh Yahweh shine. It's future tense. Yahweh shine. Um, and so a lot of times when you see a Yah in the front of the word, a word that's that's how you know it's a that's how you know it's future tense. So Yahweh shine. Um. Uh, napan, na, um, pardon me, not um, yeah, are Yahawa Panyawa, which pan means it means face or, or it means before or face, Panyawa, which means um, like, like saying like um, fa face. Which panya is is saying face, the wa like panya is face, wa is his. So that wa at the end of the word right here, right there, that's gonna that's basically meaning his. So face his, directly translated face his, and then you have um aliyaka, which. Al, al is upon. All right, al yaka. Then that ka, that ka at the end of that word is saying the or or you. You know it, the. You really don't say the in modern English. You'll say like you. You know. But in more so old English, you'll, you'll say the, like especially if you're reading the King James. Okay, and then the the third line in the Paleo Hebrew, you have um, Wayachanka. So Wa meaning and, like so Wa at the end of the word it will mean his, but if Wa is at the beginning of a word. It'll mean um it'll mean and all right, which this is why it's right here. This is at the beginning of the word, so it means and and then you have Yahanka. Now here we have that ya again, but the ya, all right, now the the ya actually it changes the root word again in this context, just like it changed it in awar to uh, y y y are. Um, it also changed the root word, which this is gracious, but the root word of gracious in the Hebrew is uh, chanan, chanan, which means like, means like mercy. 
you know, that's how you say mercy. Um, so, Hanan, which is grace, you know, gracious. I don't know what does it say in um uh, yeah. Yep, it's like for instance this this um Doi Rhymes Bible, the Lord show his face to thee and have mercy on thee. See, because that's what it that's what Hanan means in Hebrew, mercy. Um, but see that Yah, that Yah in the front of the word showed you that it's future tense and it showed you not just because future tense, sometimes future tense could like, for instance, if it was, um, feminine, if it was feminine future tense, it would have a tha instead of a Yah. It would be, um, like you, you would say, hi, uh, it was like a, if it was like a if you were saying like she, but Yahweh is not a she, he's a he. You know? So you wouldn't say she, you wouldn't say that. You'll say this. You know? Um let's see here. Or if you was, or if you were to say, um, how do we, how, how would you do that? If you would say future tense, but if it was, um, uh, if it was masculine, masculine future tense for like saying, um, um, they, like, um, how do I say, if, like saying like. They, they, they shall be gracious unto thee. You will say, um, it will be conjugated like, uh, wachan, um, wachan, wach, uh, wachanya, It will be a wa in the front, um, It'll be a Y in the front, and then it'll be a Y at the end. And that's that's if it were to be um, plural, future tense plural. Like if it was multiple, like if, say, for instance, if it was a plural gods, which just mean like power and rulers, you know? But this right here, because it's a Y, that shows you it's future tense um like singular, singular future tense, masculine. <clears throat> All right, verse 26. It says, Yasha Yahweh, which Yasha, Yasha, now that comes from the Hebrew word Nasha. Nash which and essentially nasha ah that's what that's actually where you get the word nasa from which not not um in the hebrew is nasha ah which means to bear up or lift or lift up that's actually where you get the word nasa like the space program that's where it comes from it's, it's, a, it's a hebrew word um, but yay, yeah, according to those other guys, they say we don't have the Hebrew. All right, we'll let them continue to be dwellers of darkness and wandering stars. But we're going to be that light. We're not going to, no, we're going to be that light. We will. So, but the Yah in the front of the word, the Yah at the front shows you, it shows you is what? And I keep saying this because repetition is important. The Yah at the front of the word shows you it is that it is future tense singular. Masculine. Alright? So, but if you were to take, but see the thing is, because that Yah's there, that Yah took away that nah. It re it really 
the just the, the root word of that word is nasha. Now, if it was okay, yeah, that's essentially the point on that one. All right, and then you have Yahawa, which Yahawa is a representation of the Hawa because you don't you're not saying he, but you're saying Yahawa because Yahawa is like saying like for instance, if you got a, a individual's name, if his, if his name is John in the sentence, you don't gotta say you want you're it's more personalized. You're not saying um um he um he loved me. You're saying John loved me, you know? Which John is takes the place of the he in the more intimate set, setting of literature. All right. It says Panyawa, which pan, panya meaning face, wa meaning his, al yaka, al meaning upon, um, and then the ka meaning the. And then um, it says wa 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 ya wa yasham. Which wa meaning and in the front of the, if the wa is in the front of the word like this, right here, that means and, and then yasham. Okay, well, uh oh, well we got the ya again, all right. Which the root word is shawam. The root word is is is, is it like how you got the sham? It's actually the root word is shawam. Which shawam means um, to a point, and so it's saying in Yahweh shall appoint, and it's like a prayer, and Yahweh appoint, la, and then the la meaning to, the ka meaning the, so la meaning to, ka meaning the, and then you have. Um, Shalom, and then Shalom meaning peace. And so these guys, they'll, they'll say, Shalom, Israel, Shalom. But um, they'll say we don't have the Hebrew. All right. It's crazy that you got, you got individuals that actually believe and follow them. Well, see, the script said the deceived and deceiver are his. Wow. The Lord did it to him. But um, see, that's why we have to be we we have to be thankful for this truth, and and treat it very precious. Thankful for Yahweh Bashim Shah has given us this this wisdom and understanding. But you got individuals out there that's wandering stars that they think they got it down pat, but they don't. They if you if you if you're not using the name of the Heavenly Father, well, you you're not what you think you are. You're really not. You know. If you're not using the name of the only begotten Son, Yahweh Shai, well, you're just you're just definitely not what you think you are. And it's important that we cherish those names and we cherish this doctrine in which we've been given by the Holy Spirit and has come by the way of our beloved apostles. <clears throat> so that's essentially it. And give all praises, honor, glory, and worship to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Machah Kodash, the abundance to the elders and apostles of the great millstone. Salutations to Yaakim. Shalom and keep the faith.